1.3 right here, and this is a 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Watch the flow rate. All right. Now watch the difference in the flow rate when we pressurize the cup. Watch. See that? See how it's flowing? Now watch the other one. Watch. 0.8 with the maximizer system. Get some air movement. Now watch this. See how that paint or water is being forced out with more velocity? This is a no full zone. On with the class. Now, you know, there are painters that are crossing over from regular conventional spray painting over to the maximizer system. So what's the difference? Here's the difference, I'll explain to you. With a regular spray gun, you're gonna have gravity fed. And you're gonna have a gun very similar to this. This is my old Optima gun back in the day. This is what I used to use, All right? You have, uh, you know, just a regular lid and there's a hole in the lid. And there's a 1.3 tip in here. 1.3 needle and tip. With regular air compressor, this would be sprayed at about, you know, 25 PSI, which is what I like to use back in the day. 25, 27. With the maximizer system, all right, okay, let's tone it down, I know. All right, I'm still amped up from some coffee, but I'm also wanting to uh, teach, so let's, all right, we're going to tone it down. All right, so, okay, we're using a 0.8, and a 0 0.8, you know, is smaller than a 1.3. So how does that work, all right? I've opened up the mixture so I can pull a full trigger and let gravity and the vent hole just let the material flow out. Now this is sealed so I can lay it down like this. This one, you notice the cap can come off real easy or you can twist it on, but you have a weep hole which is your, you know, if you didn't have that there, you'd create a, a, a vacuum and nothing would flow out. So if that gets plugged up in regular con conventional air compressor spraying, you're gonna have issues. So you do need to make sure that that's always free. And this is also maxed out to pull it and then the trigger goes down and full stuff comes up. When you pressurize a cup, you have more backing up that paint as it's flowing through. And you'll see the difference. So you can actually use a smaller size needle and tip than like a 1.3 or 1.4. You can go down to a 0.8 or a 1.0. So let's go ahead and fill these up. Now, I'm also real big on safety. So if, if you're not into safety, it's a no fool zone, there's a door. Obviously I'm not wearing gloves right now because we're just working with water, but I am wearing my safety glasses. And you're gonna wanna have a mask with a filter and a pre-filter, P95. You wanna make sure you're always wearing a mask, but gloves, because our skin breathes and it absorbs. So luckily we're only using water. And the reason why we're using water, because for class this is economical, it, it shows what we need to learn, and we'll be using real stuff later, but right now let's just use water. It's not toxic And we can reuse it. With paint, once you spray it and it sticks on the wall, now you want to make sure this is snug. If it's not snug, you're going to have little dribbles coming out. So just make sure it's nice and snug. Just a little hug like that. Okay, look. So 1.3.8. Watch the flow rates. Alright, you see the flow rates? Remember, this is a smaller needle and tip, and this is a larger needle and tip. Now watch the flow rates when you pressurize the cup with a maximizer system. So I'm gonna hook this up to another gun. I'm gonna piggyback the air from this spray gun, which is powered by the M3000 over there, and pressurize this cup. And then you'll see the different flow rates. I'll pull, it in, pull the camera in closer too, so you can really see that. And this will help answer the question of what's the difference and how does that give us benefit. 
once again, this is just regular watch. See that? See how it's flowing? Now watch the other one. Watch. Point it with the maximizer system. Get some air movement. Now watch this. See how that paint or water is being forced out with more velocity? You know? You can use a smaller tip and get more paint on that panel. See that? Comparison. Alright? Yeah, look at that. So think about that for a second. If we're using a smaller tip, okay? If we're using a smaller tip, and with the smaller tip, we're able to accomplish the same goal, what are we really doing? We're saving paint, we're saving material, we're saving we're saving money because you're using less paint. And we're accomplishing the same thing. So that's how you understand why this system is more efficient. This is true HVLP. True HVLP, high volume, low pressure. This is high volume, low pressure, but this is true HVLP over here. And I used to use this, and if you notice painters who are spraying with a conventional you know, there's, there's people that are using the RP, which is reduced pressure. And there's people who are using HVLP. And the difference with RP, sure, you can move faster and have a, a bigger fan, but you're also going to have more pollution coming out. It's just the facts. When you're using HVLP, you have to, you know, flow with the rate of that, that particular gun. And you can move at a pretty good pace. If you count the distance, a painter will cover in a large size door. It's going to be about four. It's going to be about three seconds with an RP gun. It's going to be about four seconds with the maximizer. Now, there's a diff there's a reason for that. One, the painter. Each painter has a different way of painting. Some people like to hose it on and move fast. It's almost like going fast and hoping it hits, hoping it doesn't run. There's a lot of that going on. I'm more methodical of a painter. I like to see what my panel is doing with the paint as it's hitting, what it's doing as I'm leaving it, seeing it there, I'm seeing it here, and I'm seeing what I gotta do ahead of time. Right? So I'm watching and I'm looking. And if you notice, I'm always using a light or some form of a light so I can see the gloss. Or if you need a medium coat, I can see what that looks like on the panel. I'm looking here, I'm looking there. I'm looking ahead. So as I'm laying it down, I'm watching it, 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 I'm watching it. You can paint like this, boom, 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 but are you really seeing what you're painting? I'm looking, I'm watching. That's why my technique tends, to, and, and you need to work on this too, because some painters are, they're, they're slow this way, but then they're fast this way. And then they're just, you know, they're timing. If you watch a painter, the times. If you're a consistent painter, your time is consistent here to here to here to here. And if you need to work on that time, you count in your head like a musician, you're on tempo. Otherwise, if you're not on tempo, you're speeding it up and slowing it down, you're going to have more paint in one area, less paint in another area, and you're going to have an issue with this area having more paint that's going to start to run. And this area being a little bit more dry or medium wet coat, and you got to buff that area out. So that's something you, you look at when you're spraying. The other thing too is how much paint are you using? You know, if, if you're using a regular conventional, and not the best conventional air spray because, you know, they do produce awesome finishes too, but a lot of it is going into the air and into your filter, and you got to replace the filter more often in your booth. So. That's why I've made the switch, and I've you know, made the switch years ago, because I see there's a benefit to having less waste, more productivity, better transfer efficiency, and I'm not polluting the air as much, you know?
And, and obviously, we are spraying with toxic stuff in the automotive world. That's why you need to protect yourself. If you're not protecting yourself, then you need to start now because this stuff is exposure is cumulative. Your body will start to accumulate all the toxins from spraying if you're not wearing your mask. And I'm seeing guys who spray without a mask, and that's just not very smart, all right? One day, you're going to be spraying, and the signs of toxic exposure to isocyanate, your throat is going to tighten up. You're going to feel like you've got a huge frog in your throat. You can't swallow real well. And how do I know? Because I've been exposed to the point where I've, I've felt those symptoms. You, you're going to feel like you have congestion. I've seen painters who are spraying, and I can tell they're already sensitized, and they're spraying with some pretty vicious isocyanates in the paint, and their nose is just running. All right, that person needs to be in a fresh air respirator or get the heck out of that environment and get to some fresh air. So if you start to see these signs, and the signs are also after you're done painting, all right? When you paint a panel and then you leave the room, that paint is still off-gassing. All those toxins are filling up the room that you now left or it's filling up the interior of a car. So let's say you painted, the customer gets in, someone has an issue with asthma or they're just sensitized to anything that's whatever smell. Next thing you know they start experiencing these side effects. They need to get some fresh air. So you need to warn your customer, hey, if you start to experience certain things and like some people, you know, a lot of this collision stuff here is get it in, get it out. Alright? Sure. Car goes in the booth, gets sprayed, and temperature goes up, bake it. But it might be dry, it might be dry to handle. But that stuff is still off-gassing. And you get your customer get in your car within four hours or five hours because of, you know some manufacturers say, hey, you can do all this within three hours and get it delivered to the customer. The customer gets the car. They might not show serious signs of exposure, but they're still getting exposed. So do we really need to get that fast with our paint, you know, and our, our throughput? Because I, I think it's it's better to to cycle it through at a much more conventional rate and they're trying to push it out bam 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 and so what does that do it, it puts the, the technician at more of a risk because the technician got a ran you know, run and gun all right and then it puts the customer this is my views now right but I've also had this experience so I know what it's like when people start to have into issues with side effects from isocyanate exposure one day you're gonna wake up and you just cannot enter the paint room you cannot be within a foot of any paint smell. So if you don't want to have that experience, then or you could just die. <laughs> you know, you could just go to you could go to a paint store, all of a sudden your your lungs lock up, and you're gonna die. Alright? Because you can't breathe. So think about PPE. Real port. Okay. Alright. So now look, let's get back to this. So when we're using a pressurized cup, we can use a smaller size tip. And some paint. Actually, the ver a variety of, of clear coats, uh, they're going to be a 4-1, 3-1, 2-1 mixes, plus 5%, 10%, 15% reduce the reduction. Now, when you start to think about those different mixtures, what's the difference between a 4-1 and a, like a 3-1? Well, this is what I was taught, okay? It's like you might have compacted isocyanates, all right? Means the isocyanate molecules are more, it's like a bunch of BBs versus a bunch of marbles or however you want to try to, you know, comprehend that analogy. And some clear coat is going to be real thick. It's going to be like so thick that you are trying to push it to a smaller size 0.8 and you're just figuring out it's not working so well. So you need to step it up to 1.0 where this if you're using a 1.3, 1.3 is a pretty decent size, but you're still doing a lot of waste. So this really, you know, it, it's had its day, and there are people going to use it, but this is where we're going to now. This is the direction painters need to think about, because 0.8 really is an efficient needle and tip. With a point A, you can spray sealer, you can spray base coat, you can spray primer. As long as it's on a high build primer and it can, you know, go through the point A nozzle and tip size, and you can spray clear coat. 
four ones, easy with this. Now, if you're going to spray some more, you know, 1.5 application clear coats like the 8096 from Spees, this stuff right here, all right? This is Spees 8096. You got to step it up. You got to go to 1.0 and you got to up your PSI. Now, a lot of the stuff that I spray now, let's put this away because we don't really need to discuss this anymore. Hopefully you can understand why we're using a 0.8 in the Maximizer system. And these are my old guns, okay? I used to use the Italian GFX 92, sprays silver is awesome. But the Maximizer system sprays silver even more awesome. You don't even have to think about it, it lays down silver. This is my clear buster, and this is my primer gun, the FLG3, the classic. These have been collecting dust because I no longer need these. I no longer use these. 